Good morning, my Renews Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, men charged over stolen goods in Old Harbor remanded. Four men who were held with a car loaded with a stolen goods were remanded in the St. Catherine Parish Court on Tuesday. Charged with a larceny of goods are Kenrick Fullerton, Richard Officer, Sion Graham and Leon Brown, all of St. Catherine addresses. They were ordered to return to court on September 20. Allegations are that on July 15, the complainant was at home in Bushy Park, St. Catherine, when he heard his goats crying out. He went to investigate and saw men loading his goats into a Toyota Provox motor car. He shouted, Thief! and the car sped away. A report was made to the Old Harbor Police and the vehicle was intercepted with the six goats inside. The men were taken into custody and the owner identified his goats. They were subsequently charged following an investigation. Citizens Association in Clarendon bemoans a lack of electricity since a burial. It's been too long. We are at our wit's end, says that the Spalding Citizens Association in Clarendon as the organization condemns the Jamaica Public Service for the prolonged power outage in the area following the passage of Hurricane Beryl earlier this month. JPS is Director of Corporate Communications, Winsome Callum, said that power was restored to some areas and work was being done to get other areas back on the grid. A timeline for restoration, however, was not indicated. In a statement, the association urges JPS to move with alacrity to restore power, citing what it says is the company's lack of preparedness for the hurricane season. While the passage of Hurricane Beryl was not our doing, the effects are telling of a company that was clearly not ready for the hurricane season. The extent of the damage is a reflection of the lack of proper maintenance to the company's infrastructure, especially in the rural areas. The statement continued. It begs the question how much worse it would be if Hurricane Beryl had directly hit the island. It is now almost three weeks. We have been without power and we have simply had it. Several communities including Spalding Hill, Glencoe, Baileston, Saguenay, Alston, Grantham and Peckham remain without power. Knox College and Spalding High School are also without power, the news understands. The association is demanding answers, how much longer must we wait? Are there any other avenues that the company can take to increase the boots on the ground? What is the consideration of the recommendation of the minister to get help from within the region? The association says that the experience underscores the need for a second power supply company on the island or look at other models of electricity distribution as in Europe. Portland Cottage Mom of Four seeks help to rebuild it before new school year. 31-year-old Trishona Brown has now lost the roof of her home for the third time, most recently during Hurricane Barrel's passage three weeks ago. Having almost lost her roof during Hurricanes Ivan in 2004 and Dean in 2007, the Portland Cottage Clarendon resident was at her wit's end last Thursday. It's been a lot of starting over, she bemoaned in an interview with the news. Right now we are living out of suitcases and garbage bags. The distressed woman said that her household of seven, which includes a 19-year-old and three children, ages 2, 3 and 10, has been left vulnerable to the elements. Brown's top priority now is to find the building materials for a new roof. However, it has been challenging since the money being earned only covers immediate needs like food. Brown, who has been living in the community for 28 years, informed the news that her children have not stopped crying and have expressed their worry that they have nowhere to live. Reflecting on her preparations ahead of the hurricane, Brown said that the family moved most of their furniture and household appliances to a friend's two-story property across the street. Beds and the dressers which remained in the home suffered a major water damage. Although Brown's immediate thoughts are on re-roofing the structure, she is also anxious about the upcoming school year and stated that she would much rather be able to relocate from the flood-prone coastal community. I have to do the best for my kids, and this is not the best. 
We can't keep on going back and forth with the same thing, she stated. Even if rainfall heavy, when the water level rise, it decides not to go either way. It just sits still and we have to dig our own drains. Each time the rain falls, it's the same problem, she added. In 2005, it was reported that over 200 families who lived close to the Salter Pond and the marsh in Portlander Cottage were relocated by the Office of National Reconstruction and are supported by the United States Agency for International Development. Following Hurricane Ivan, these families moved to new homes in Shearer's Heights, situated on roughly 70 acres of land at an elevation of 60 feet above sea level. Brown, who fears that her children might have to wait until October before they can return to school, told the news that she is hopeful that this will be the last time that she would have to deal with this situation. We're still thinking about getting the roof first because it's not comfortable here, she said. Murder of Detective Sergeant Taking Toll on Family and Colleagues Detective Sergeant Kevin Maine's mother, a retired cop, as well as his colleague are devastated. They have seen Detective Sergeant Maine, a veteran investigator, work in many tough communities, including West Kingston, and they did not expect him to end up getting killed by an accused fraudster he was escorting on the grounds of the precinct where he worked in Halfway Tree St. Andrew. According to an official police report, the tragedy unfolded at about 5.45 p.m. on Monday after Detective Sergeant Amin, who was stationed at the Halfway Tree Criminal Investigation Branch, received a report from a complainant in relation to an alleged fraud matter involving Dian Singh, owner of Dian Singh Auto on Hogley Park Road in St. Andrew. Singh, who was reported on bail, was actually attending the Halfway Tree Criminal Court, which is at the same grounds as at the police station, on another fraud matter. So Detective Sergeant Main went over to get him in furtherance of that investigation. They were walking back to the station when at some point he attacked Sergeant Main and a tussle ensued. Another policeman who saw what was happening intervened when Singh grabbed his firearm and shot a sergeant main and then turned the gun on himself, senior superintendent of police Stephanie Lindsay, who heads the corporate communications unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, told the news on Tuesday. She said the maids, family and the co-workers have been reeling and are receiving care from the chaplaincy and the medical services branch of the JCF. We are picking up the pieces. I just had a briefing with our chaplaincy and medical services branch. They are doing a lot of work with the officers at Halfway Tree because they are very devastated about the situation, just the circumstances and the individual that he was. Sergeant Amin was a veteran investigator in the force. He has worked in many tough communities, spent a lot of time in the Kingston Western Division, and when you look at it, to say this has happened, it is very difficult for them, Lindsay said. His mother, who is a former member of the force and him, were extremely close. He has at least four children, which includes two teenage daughters, Lindsay told the news. Lindsay in the meantime said an investigation into the matter is ongoing. The Independent Commission of Investigations is also involved. There are cameras, so we are reviewing the footage to get a better account as both the persons who were involved are deceased, she told the news. She said that the police confirmed the circumstances as it relates to Singh, who had reported for court and supposedly had his bill extended and was being taken by the cop to be interviewed in relation to the new matter when the incident unfolded. She, in the meantime, described the incident as very bizarre and unfortunate. Unfortunately, it is part of the nature of the work that we do. It is a very risky job. Any day can start out perfectly and end up in tragedy, Lindsay said. Guys, thanks for watching. Please join us this afternoon at 2 p.m. for another news update.